Yep. So now, now you can start. Yeah. Oh, you already typed. Sorry. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's it. Uh, that's uh, like chapter twelve of the uh, the introduction to acromatrix uh, using R, um, and uh, we'll be looking at uh, instrumental variable regressions, which are it's uh, um, a motivation from uh, chapter nine, where we discuss the problem of. Uh, um, our OLS estimate was getting biased because of uh, omitted variable measurement issues and, and uh, reverse causality or simultaneous causality issues. Uh, if that's the case, we, we, we usually have the problem of endogeneity, which uh, it's a, a big problem economists uh, try to solve. And we, uh, IV is one of the, the, the techniques that uh, has been proposed by economists to try to get, this, uh, uh, to get rid of this endogeneity uh, problem. And uh, this chapter will sort of uh, gives us uh, a basic introduction of how the IV uh, technique works, uh, a general technique for obtaining a consistent estimate of, of the coefficients of interest is instrumental variables uh, uh, of interest uh, in, 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 in this inter instrumental variable uh, regression technique. Yeah. So uh, the IV regression, also called sometimes it called it could be called a two-stage uh, least squares. Uh, it's basically the same. Uh, there is almost no difference. Uh, yeah, it's almost the same. And then the book will guide us through how to do all this in R. Uh, mm. It will guide us through how to do this in R. Yeah, we'll be using the same packages as we we did uh, uh, previously. The uh, the the AER package and then the 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 Stargrisa package to present uh, our results in a very nice table. And 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 uh, feel free to always come in any time. You know, feel free to come in any time. So we start with the 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 the, uh, the IV estimator with a simple regression and a single instrument. Even though that's not usually the case, we we hardly will have. A case where we'll just have to look at a single regression, but I, I think the author does this to sort of stimulate our interest and to build on uh, the base, the most basic uh, foundation, and goes on. So that's the our regression model where y i is uh, yeah, equals to beta naught plus beta one the x i plus u i, uh, where i is uh, the uh, number of observations from one to n. So the, we, we have a problem here because the, the, the error term, which is the UI, it's uh, correlated with, uh, with XI, which is basically the endogeneity problem. So if we use OLS, our results will be, our beta will be incons inconsistent. It will be sort of biased. Yeah, our beta will be biased. So, so that's why we resort to the IV to uh, look for an instrument um, that will help us uh, get consistent results of consistent estimates of beta. So the instrument has to satisfy two main conditions for it to be valid. The instrument has to be relevant, meaning that there should be uh, a, a correlation between the instrument and the, the X, like and the endogenous variable, which is the X. And uh, the, the second condition for validity of the instrument is uh, instrument exogeneity condition. The instrument uh, Z must not be correlated with the, the error term. So these are the two main uh, conditions that the instrument has to satisfy for it to be uh, a valid instrument. In, in such a case, uh, 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 we could say that our, 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 our beta estimates, let's say beta one estimate from the IV, it's, a, it's, a, it's an unbiased estimate. Uh, yeah, uh, although this uh, finding uh, good instruments might be really challenging. I think this is one of the main problems, like uh, papers that use IV, this is one of the main challenges they have to get, especially the, the second condition. You could easily see the first condition, the, the correlation between the instrument and the endogenous variable could easily be found, but uh, the problem of the instrument not correlated with the error term, it's something that, you know, it's um, mm. easy to, it's not, it's not that easy to, 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 to verify. So uh, now it explains how the, the two-stage least square works. So uh, the, the, the basic uh, mechanism is this. We first run this uh, regression. That is the, the, we regress XI on the instrument. And that will be the four-stage regression. Uh, where this, uh, the, 
part of the this first part of the regression uh, explains uh, is the, the 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 component of xi that is explained by z, whilst the 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 vi is is the component that cannot be explained by z and exhibits some correlation with the error term. So once we are able to get the estimates uh, from the first stage, we obtain the fitted values for the axis that we had uh, obtained from the first stage regression, and then we use those fitted fitted values for our uh, second stage, we regress um, y on those fitted values. Yeah. So uh, basically, that's the mechanism. So yeah. So in the in the in the second stage, this is what we are going to estimate. The second stage processes uh, uh, the the beta zero and the beta one. The yeah. So uh, this is how our, our beta one is going to be estimated for the second stage. It's nothing but the ratio of the, the, the sample covariance between the instrument and our dependent variable to the sample covariance between the instrument our and our uh, regressor of interest. Yeah, uh, Kim, if you have any comments you want to make before we look at the example. Okay. Okay. So um, now I look at the um, example. So now it gives a simple application um, of uh, how we could. Uh, Okay, yeah, so we look at the application uh, to the demand for cigarettes. So, um, so the, like a health economist have this issue of uh, studying how, how, uh, how health affecting behavior of individuals is influenced by healthcare systems and regulations. So probably the most prominent example in public policy debates is uh, smoking as, is it, it, as yeah, it is related to many illnesses and, 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 and has some negative externalities. It is plausible that cigarette consumption can be reduced by taxing cigarette heavily. So in this case, we expect uh, that um, the, the higher the tax on cigarette, um, the, the lower the quantity of uh, uh, cigarette that will be consumed. This is uh, uh, what we are, um, this is like the, the a priori um, scenario we expect. And, and this could be like a, 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 a normal elasticity case, like an economist use elasticity to answer questions like, like this. So the, since the, the price elasticity of demand for cigarettes is known, it, 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 it must be estimated. So if we want to use OLS, we'll have problem. We'll have problem of uh, um, um, reverse causality or simultaneous causality. It could be that uh, the, the problem could be either the demand side or the supply side. So what, what is causing the, 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 the decrease in the consumption. So it could be a reverse causality problem. Yeah, so elasticity is to answer this kind of questions. So uh, we cannot use OLS because of the, the problem of uh, um, um, uh, reverse causality, like simultaneous causality, causality going from both sides between the demand side and the supply side. So that's why we have to use the, 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 the IV and see so now we are going to use the data set on cigarettes um, SW, which uh, is from the AR package. It's a panel data that uh, contains observations on cigarette consumption and uh, several economic indicators for 48 uh, continental federal states in the US from 1985 to 1999. Yeah, so uh, in, uh, in this first example, he just wants to look at a cross, a cross section. From the panel, he just wants to look at the cross section and wants to look at what happened at uh, 1995. Yeah, what what happened? Whether like uh, um, uh, an in, uh, an increased uh, in the price of cigarette led to a uh, reduction in the quantity in in the states uh, that have been considered in this uh, study. So uh, we load the data as usual, and then summary gives us an overview of the data. We see the states, the year from 1995 to. Uh, 1985 to 1999, and the uh, the CPI, which is the, the consumer price index, which uh, we'll use to um, to adjust the prices to real in real terms. 
the population to maybe get the uh, per capita, let's say income or the per capita, uh, the per pack, per packs or pack, uh, packs of cigarettes smoked, like the income, the tax, the prices. And uh, I think this is also another type of tax. So uh, basically we could see the, the, the uh, an overview of the, the data set we'll be working with. And um, as usual, we could always use the question mark cigarettes as double to have description of the, the variables. So we are interested in uh, estimating uh, beta one. We're interested in estimating beta one. So we have this uh, equation of uh, uh, log of uh, the quantity of cigarettes is uh, equals to the beta node plus uh, beta one uh, log of uh, the price of um, cigarettes um, plus the error term. So the QR is the number of uh, um, cigarette packs per capita sold, and the the the, the PI cigarettes is the uh, after tax average uh, real price. So it has been adjust, adjusted for uh, inflation for, for part of cigarettes. So we could use uh, IV. So the instrument we are going to use to what what we are going to use to in, instrument for the 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 the, the real per capita. Real per pack, the real per pack uh, cigarette is uh, the sales tax. That is the, the proportion of taxes on cigarette arising from the general sales of tax, uh, general sales tax. So as we mentioned, that uh, uh, a valid instrument has to satisfy two things. It has to be um, uh, it has to be um, relevant and 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 yeah, he mentions like it has to be relevant and uh, and, and and also exogenous. So um, the author is not stressing that at this point, uh, whether the, later in the chapter, he will start looking at the validity of the instrument, but uh, uh, they, they, they argue that like this, the, the sales tax, we, we believe that uh, has uh, uh, some correlation with the, the price, the, the price of, uh, of, of, of cigarettes, uh, the sales tax. So like the higher this, the sales tax, we, we expect the, the price of uh, uh, price, uh, the average prices to, to go up. And uh, also, it is plausible that uh, the sales tax is exogenous since sales tax uh, do not influence uh, the quantity sold directly, but through the price. So this, 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 the, the author didn't test for now, but these are all plausibilities. And uh, a simple correlation could show that uh, this is the correlation between the, the sales tax and the price, uh, about uh, 0 0.61, which is fairly not, uh, not bad. So to do this in R, we will have to generate some some variables. The real, uh, the we compute the real per capita prices. We also compute the sales tax. Uh, we look at the correlation is uh, like zero point six one four as we mentioned. Since we are looking at a cross section in uh, nineteen ninety five, we construct that, and then we run the first stage regression, and that's that's the the first stage equation. Our instrument on the the price. We see this. Uh, we see that uh, a one unit uh, increase in the sales tax uh, increases our increases uh, sort of uh, increases the the price of cigarettes by zero point zero three one. Like increases by that, mm. which is the the first stage. Mm. However, uh, uh, since uh, we are uh, dealing with a two-stage least square, so this is not actually. This is just the four stage, but from this we have to uh, um, um, create like fitted uh, fitted values or predicted values. So, oh, here also it's mentioning about the goodness of fit. Uh, you could see the R square is like uh, forty-seven percent. It doesn't explain much variation, but it's not very bad. It doesn't. It's not. It's not very bad. So from from this uh, four stage, we'll we'll have to create uh, uh, fitted values. We now, uh, next we store the lock uh, uh, price of cigarette, the fitted values obtained from the first stage as this, which we will use, which we will regress on, on our dependent variable to get the, mm. the, 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 the second stage estimates. Yeah. <sighs> so uh, that's how we do that in R. You, you wanna say something, Kim? Uh, no, no, no. I just say about the, yeah, in here is a kind of a, yeah, because it is a two-step model. So I think, I think that they 
in auto actually used the LM function twice after the predicting the that uh, log C cigarette prediction first, and then uh, using that this one to the this in here to as a two step function. So, yeah, okay, yeah. Because uh, it is actually kind of a kind of a, what we can say is mm -hmm. like uh, in this case, PI, yeah. uh, cigarette mm -hmm. actually affects to the to the number of packs consumed. Mm -hmm. Actually, this one is a Y value and this one is X value. And then there is actually, actually another Z value because uh, this per capita, per capita cigarette actually affects by what, what? Sales tax. Yeah, the sales tax, yeah. Yeah, this is how, how maybe if I can draw the causal diagram, it looks like this. So actually yeah. two-step model is kind of like a X actually have, have associated with the Y. But the thing is, in case of the X, there is another instrumental variable called Z mm -hmm. that directly affects to the X, but not if not related with the Y at all. Yeah. So, so in in case of the this Z value, actually, what is called the instrumental variable, and then to do this, to mm -hmm. solve the, this problem, we actually do the this. A regression a regression model for this one for the first one as a first step yeah. and then second step we do this so this is actually this r code this exactly show how we do this by using lm function by yeah. using lm function twice right yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's it so yeah i just kind of wondering yeah yeah i think it is yeah quite feasible so yeah, yeah, just we go ahead. Yes, I just uh, summarizing. Yeah. yeah, this is quite clear. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. The, the illustration makes it even much more clear. Yeah, 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 and 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 this is the we see the results for the second stage. Uh, it's not bad. Mm -hmm. It's it's like what we expected. You know, it uh, um um sort of uh, the uh, an increase in, uh, in the price reduces uh, the, the 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 packs or the quantity of packs. Um, of cigarette by let's say 1.08 uh, uh, percent something like this which is which is not trivial which is not trivial so uh, he's arguing that we could also use the iv rec function in r to do this and um, um, as, as the author will mention later it is better to use this iv rec function because the if we want to do it manually using the lm it, it it has some some drawbacks, especially with the standard errors. Yeah, so it's better to use the IV reg function, which we could easily use in R like this. Um, our um, we have the IV reg, we have the dependent variable, the uh, x variable, and then we have the we have the the instrument, and basically we we have uh, the same results. However, he, he mentioned mm. mentioned some notes that things that we have to be cautious of. Mm. Uh, Actually, the, the in here, yeah. in here, like a this, uh, like a this symbol. Have you have you used the uh, multi-level modeling? No, because uh, this one is also this symbol also gonna be used for the when we have a multi-level modeling. But mm -hmm. in this case, sales tax is the kind of a continuous variable. And then we actually using this one for the Z kind of a instrumental variable. But this okay. symbol also used when we have a multi-level model, kind of a hierarchy. But anyway, yeah, I just kind of uh, say about the, yeah, because uh, in it looks like a price actually have a have a variation depending on the sales tax, yeah. right? That's the what this symbol is stands for. Yeah, it's quite useful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and and this is uh, really straightforward, and it's uh, mm -hmm. it's more reliable, you know, mm -hmm. and you get this the same uh, um, coefficients for the beta one, mm -hmm. but uh, the, the 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 standard errors, the LM, mm -hmm. however, 
the standard errors mm -hmm. reported for the second stage regression example using the LM are invalid mm -hmm. because they they, the, they 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 neither adjust for uh, using predictions from the first stage regression as in the second stage regression. So sort of the the IV rec helps us. Uh, uh, it, it does this adjustment automatically. So it, it's uh, it's better to use the IV rec function than the, the LM. And you, you know, the LM also, it's a it's a bit time consuming because you have to run to regressions, regression uh, twice. Yeah, twice, you know, when, when you could just do it once, like, like using the IV rec. Hmm. Yeah. So we also uh, important to like the, the book always stress that hetero, uh, like uh, heteroskedasty, like robust standard errors, where it's uh, important to compute them. It's a 1.08 percentage points. Yeah, yeah, 1.08. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's quite elastic because it's a more, it's, yeah, it's a, I would say about the elastic because it's a more than one. So, yeah. Yeah. But the, the problem is, should we trust this? Is, is can we say with certainty that this is on bias? Mm. That's, that's that's something you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. because there could be problems of omitted variable bias. Yeah, right. Yes, yeah, because we are just looking at uh, uh, the price. The price could be correlated with the the income. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we expect richer states to be, I mean, be able yeah. to afford. Yeah, okay. need more, need to add more, add more variables. Yeah, so we need to, to add more, to more the elastic. Yeah. Yeah. Need to add more regressions. Yeah. yeah. So then now he, he wants to generalize the general yeah. IV regression. And that's how the generalized uh, model would look like. It's still the same um, uh, regression framework, like uh, 12.5. We have our regression equation yi, um, mm -hmm. but it's equals to the betas and uh, the uh, the, 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 the betas, we have the x's, and we have the wi, which is like the exogenous variable that uh, um, we, we, we want to add in the model to deal with the omitted variable bias. Yeah, and then the error term. So the i is the observations, y, y is the dependent uh, variable, and the betas are the Unknown regression coefficients, uh, X is the endogenous, and the double uh, are the exogenous uh, regressors, which are uncorrelated with uh, with with the error term, and U is the error term. Uh, Z will be the uh, the instrumental variable. So we have mm -hmm. something like uh, over over identification when uh, the instruments are more than the um, endogenous uh, um, regressors. We have over identification and the reverse case, when the reverse case happens, that is when the instruments are less than the uh, endogenous regressors we have under identification. And when they are equal, we have exact identification. Uh, for estimations of the IV regression model, we require exact identification or over identification, but we cannot mm. estimate IV regressions models with under identification. Mm. Yeah. So uh, he's just now he's here. He's just explaining how we could use the IV rec to 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 do this. Because uh, in the IV rec, we have our dependent variable, we have the regressors, we have the exogenous variable. Now we have to add a. So we will be considering the exogenous variable in a sense as a as a, a additional uh, uh, instrument sort of. So this is how the our our equation will look like in 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 R. This is how our IV rec, if we want to use the IV rec, we'll have the, the dependent variable, the endogenous regressors, the exogenous one, and then given we have the exogenous and then we have the instruments. So he's giving us a shortcut that we could use this technique, the dot and this to, in case we have a lot of exogenous uh, variables, repeating all of them again might, um, might not be the wise thing to do. So we could just use this, uh, um, the dot and the 
minus symbol in in R and it will do it automatically for us. It will add all the um, the the exogenous variables and also the the it will add all the it will add all the exogenous variables to the to the instruments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is uh, just what it is explaining here, how we do this. Like in the first stage, we regress uh, um, X on the instrument, and then we use the depicted values, or the depicted values from there to um, um, uh, regress the dependent Y on, 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 on X. So the, now it's going more into the conditions for a valid instrument. It's just like we see in the in the in the single uh, regressor case. It's just extending to the just extending that to uh, um, the the multiple or the general regression regressors case. But it's it's all the same for for the instrument to be relevant. If uh, there are k exogenous uh, variables, are exogenous uh, variables, uh, and there is over identification where m is greater than there is exact over identification. Um, of uh, the instrument uh, Z and the predicted uh, uh, values of Y uh, from the population of the first stage regression, it must hold that no perfect, uh, yeah, then there should be no perfect collinearity co 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 between the, the predicted uh, uh, values of the endogenous variable from the first stage and the exogenous uh, variables. When, the, when there is perfect uh, collinearity, then uh, the instrument cannot be a relevant instrument. So it, one of the assumptions of a valid instrument will be violated. Yeah. And uh, the, 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 the second uh, condition, which is the exogeneity uh, condition, like uh, all M instruments must be uncorrelated with the, the error term. Yeah. So if we can show that these two conditions are met, then the results we get from the IV regression, like the beta one, the betas we get from the um, IV, we could say they have causal implications. So we could say they are consistent, they are unbiased. But uh, like to get uh, these two conditions uh, satisfied, it's not that easy. <laughs> it's not that easy. So these are the main consumption, uh, assumptions, sorry, uh, for the IV regression, the IV regression assumptions for the general IV regression model, as in key concept 12.1, we assume the following, and which is uh, uh, kind of similar to the OLS assumptions we made, because we, the conditional mean expectation, we have that, you know, the, the error term and the exogenous uh, variables are uh, uncorrelated. We have that, uh, the um, the uh, sort of the endo the, the the endogenous variables and the exogenous variables and the instrument are sort of iid sort of drawn from uh, the adjoint uh, distribution so sort of they are normally identically distributed and uh, all variables have non zero uh, sort of that there are no outliers like no huge outliers uh, among the the, the, the variables and that the instruments are valid. So uh, like uh, all the first three uh, assumptions are something we have seen in the case of the, the, the OLS or very similar, but he, the, the fourth one is, uh, which is more specific to this uh, chapter to the IV, that the, the validity of the instruments, which uh, the, the author has mentioned previously. So it goes to the same example again, but now, um, so I'm sort of adding um, uh, an extra regressor to, to the single regression case we had, to the single regressor case we had now, the same example, but now we are gonna add uh, uh, an extra regressor. So, so uh, uh, the results we had previously for, from this example, the, the beta one could be biased mainly because uh, there could be um, economic factors like state income, which impact the demand for cigarette and uh, correlate with uh, sales tax, which uh, violates the, 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 the exogeneity um, um, condition for, um, for the validity of an of a, of a instrument. 
So then to, to deal with that, we, we could add uh, income, like state income in our model and see uh, how the results will be. So that's now this is the new model we're gonna um, estimate where we have the log, um, the quantity of cigarettes um, and we have the, the log of prices then also we include uh, income, like at the state level, the state income. So we we will in that case we'll have to define the, the income variable and uh, the cross section. We are still looking at nineteen ninety five. Yeah, and if we run this model, we we have uh, look. Uh, it's a uh, previously we had like uh, one point uh, zero eight something like this. Mm. Uh, so at least the the the. The, 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 the coefficient has uh, adjusted a little bit, uh, which uh, shows that, you know, adding income has some, 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 let's say some explanatory power or something like this. So he, he also gives that we could also consider another instrument, which is like the, the, the cigarette specific uh, taxes, because we have just been looking at sales, uh, um, sales taxes as so we could consider another instrument in 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 that case we will have like the um uh if you look at the cigarette as an additional instrument we'll see how 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 our our beta coefficient will be so now we estimate this model we have the 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 packs which is the the quantity of Packs at the that 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 smoke one that 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 smoke one at the state level. Then we have the the price, the income, which are the the price is the endogenous variable, and the income here is the exogenous. Then the income will still be added because it's still the the exogenous variable, so it will be added as a, a, a sort of additional instrument. And we have the sales tax instrument, and then we have the. Uh, the cigarette specific instrument. So when we mm -hmm. add this cigarette specific instrument, we we see the coefficient even adjust further. Yeah, you want to say something? Yeah, yeah cause maybe if I can draw another another causal inference diagram in this one. Yeah. You know? okay. sure. Cause uh, visualization is uh, more intuitive. So like uh, here we have packs, right? Yeah. Uh, this one is the our y variable. And then this one actually originally affected by our price, right? Mm -hmm. This is the our x variable. But at the same time, num number of packs consumes also related with our income. Yeah, definitely it is quite true because depending on the how much money we can earn, that mm -hmm. will actually determine how many packs we can consume depending on our income level, right? Yeah. At the same time, in case of the, this R price, we have another two variable that are affected by the price, like a sales tax. Mm -hmm. Actually, definitely sales tax is increases, R price is gonna be increases. So that's the highly correlated to each other. Yeah. And then another one is CIG tax. Yeah, like specific uh, cigarette specific. Yeah, yeah. And then these two, these two variable is uh, what is called the instrumental variable affected to the this X R price variable. And then this one is the Y and yeah. R income is W, which is the exogenous variable. So which means a kind, you can just uh, thinking of uh, exogenous variable kind of uh, like a, another external factor like omitted variable or maybe I would say in the in the OLS regression is a, like a control variable, okay? Yeah, 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 so yeah, control, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, because yeah. uh, PAX is, because uh, under the income conditions, our price can be how the uh, uh, significance and magnitude of the R price is uh, impact of the R prices affects to the number of packs consumes gonna be changes depending on the this income. So these are kind of a exogenous variable and X is a in endogenous, okay? And then cigarette tax and sales tax is instrumental variable. 
And then number of packs is our Y variable, which is the, our dependent variable, right? So this is how it looks like depending on this, form, uh, this formula. Yeah. If we can visualize this formula into the causal diagram, it looks like this. This is a, I would say causal, like a, not the causal, but causal inference diagram. Yeah, like the mechanism, uh, like the channel. Yeah, mechanism, how it works. Yeah. 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 Like a modern framework. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, yeah. It's quite uh, the visualization quite helpful because yeah. it, it 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 makes it so apparent. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, because uh, the thing is actually. Uh, when we try to do the, this kind of a model, it is very hard to find about the, which one gonna be the gonna be the instrumental variable if we really want to do the instrumental variable regression model. Yeah. So what you can do is you can start drawing like this, okay? Because mm -hmm. uh, the and also this kind of a diagram actually come from the if you can do very sufficient literature review behind yeah, the, yeah. this model. Yeah. And then in the, through the, when you try to do the literature review, you can identify a lot of factors, right? That affects to the, your, your outcome variable, right? Yeah. And then what you can do next is among the, these kind of uh, factors affecting to the, these out, uh, the outcome variable, you have to reorganize those factors. Among the, among the those factors, what's the relationship among the factors? That is actually quite hard to find sometimes. Yeah, but I I don't know yeah. if you have you have you have have you you have exposed to that, but I, I think some economists are trying to use something like uh, machine learning yeah. to yeah to, uh, yeah to 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 pick the the, the right instrument. To, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, because they they, they there is this uh, IV lasso something stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. If, yeah. If you check it, they use uh, machine learning techniques that helps them to, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like or, when, when they do the literature review, you know, they will come with a bunch of uh, variables that are correlated with the endogenous variable. Yeah. Then they just use uh, some learning technique yeah. and then it gives the, 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 the variable yeah. that has the or, highest. Control. Yeah, you can use, the, you just said that you can use the machine learning technique, but the thing is after the literature review, yeah, you can, you can reorganizing the these things by using the correlation uh, analysis, like a yeah. pair, yeah. like a fair function. Fair function gonna be give you about the all of the axes, all of the possible axes, and then you can get the Pearson coefficient yeah. kind of a yeah. value, and then there might be the highly correlated value between the some of the factors. Yeah. In that case, you have to be a little bit suspicious about the, are they kind of a multi-coordinary problem, which is the, they actually measure the same thing, or if they did not measure the same thing, maybe you can say that, okay, these two variables are highly correlated because those are the, some kind of a very strong association between the, those two variables. In that case, you can, you can define one variable as a in instrumental variable in this case. Yeah. yeah, just kind of analyzing the correlation. Cause uh, when you're looking at the previous key concept, all of the, those things are the highly related with the, how, what is the G variable, G variable related with the X to identify these relationship, all you can do is you can, try to do the correlation analysis between Z and X. Yeah, yeah. By doing that, you can identify the Z value. So, mm -hmm. but anyway, yeah, so this is what I just summarize that the visualization is gonna help. But sometimes, because this one is all of the, these things actually related with the, some kind of economic variable, it is easy to find the visualization like this. But in case of the social science, yeah it is a little bit hard to find about the, this kind of a relationship, not the economic part, so. But anyway, yeah, just please go ahead. Yeah, yeah thanks for, 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 for this. Yeah, we could see that uh, using the, the two instruments, that is the, the sales tax and the, the, the cigarettes, we have like a, 
um, um, m is equals to two and uh, k is equals to one. So we have the uh, over identification. We have the over identification. So um, so we we could see using both instruments we have like uh, um, like one point two eight percent compared to the previous ones we had. So it, it the estimates obtained using both instruments are more precise. Look, the the standard errors. Mm -hmm. Um, are sort of the standard errors are lower compared to when we use uh, like the only the sales tax. So um, sort of it makes a difference to consider both instruments in this case. So now we have to check for the validity because even with this, we cannot still give uh, a lot of causal weight to this coefficient because there could still be some bias because uh, we are not sure whether our instrument, the, like the two instruments we use, both of them meet all the the, 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 con the two conditions, they satisfy the two conditions for the validity of an instrument. So we check for the validity of the instrument. So it talks about the, the weak uh, instrument validity, checking for instruments, so instruments that explain uh, little variation in the uh, endogenous variable X are called weak instruments. Like like you mentioned previously, you know, we could use correlation matrix and, and see the, 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 the correlation. So if, if it's uh, very low, we uh, those type of instruments are called weak instruments. So it's like, uh, how do we do, deal with uh, weak instruments? So if we happen to find a, an instrument, but it's it's a weak instrument, sort of the, the correlation between the instrument and the endogenous regression, it's, 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 it's very low. So uh, in this case, there is uh, this rule of thumb uh, we have to use where we, yeah, we, we compute the F statistics, which corresponds to the hypothesis that uh, the coefficients on the, on, on, the, on the instruments are zero in the first stage regression. If the F statistics is less than 10, yeah. So that's the rule of thumb. It's less than 10. The instruments are weak such that the two stage least square estimates for the coefficients of X is, is biased. And it's not it's not valid. It's 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 not valid. So this uh, uh, it's a it's a something to to be mindful of to check the the validity of the instrument, especially in the case of the weak instrument. So if we have weak instruments, one of the ways we could deal with them is to discard them and look for stronger instruments. But that's not always easy. You know, <laughs> finding in, uh, uh, instruments are, are not I know that easy, that, but that's one thing to do. Another thing to do is to stick with the weak instrument, but use uh, methods that improve upon the, the, the TSLS in this scenario. For, for example, we could, uh, for example, limited uh, information maximum likelihood estimates. It doesn't go into details on that, but uh, we could uh, uh, use uh, those methods to improve in case if we could not find a better, a stronger instrument and we want to still use the IV technique. In that case, we could use the weak instrument, but uh, um, apply this uh, limited information maximum likelihood estimation. So when, when also we have the, the exogeneity assumption is violated, that is when there is a correlation between the instrument and some, 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 some other variable in the, in the error term, the, we, could, we could test that using the over identification uh, restriction test uh, also called the the j test is an approach to test the hypothesis that additional instruments are exogenous which are sort of it's it is explained here but the the whole idea is we just take the residuals of the 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 the, the, the error term and sort of run a regression with that on the instruments and the exogenous variables and test the joint hypothesis that the, the, the coefficients on the instrument and the, uh, uh, like all the coefficients on the instrument and on the uh, exogenous variable is equals to sort of zero, which says that all the instruments are exogenous. This can be done using a corresponding F, F statistics test. We, we assume that this, uh, uh, this test 
is the over, over identification restriction text and the statistics is uh, J statistics is uh, a chi square distribution with M minus K degrees of freedom. So we can only use this when, when there is like sort of over identification, right? If like, if M is uh, less than K, we, I, don't, I don't think we could use this test. Mm. So we can only use this test when M is greater than K. That is when the, the, the instruments are greater than the endogenous, yeah, over identification restriction test, yeah. So now it gives a, 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 the same example, but now uh, at least trying to add more, sort of making it more realistic, like how uh, an academic paper will be will look like. Sort of uh, are the general sales tax and the secret specific tax valid instruments. Now we want to really test this. Um, so the book argues that uh, uh, secret specific tax could be endogenous because there might be specific uh, historical factors like uh, economic importance for tobacco, tobacco farming and cigarette production that lobby for this specific, so there could be some endogeneity. So since uh, it is plausible that tobacco growing states have higher rates of smoking than others, this uh, would lead to endogeneity of uh, the cigarette specific tax. But, 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 but what we could test uh, this, uh, um this to see whether the two uh, uh, instruments we have they are valid or not so however since the the role of the tobacco and cigarette industry is a factor that can be assumed to differ across states but not over time we could uh, look at like the, the the in i think chapter 10 we looked at panel data some panel data techniques so we could use those fixed effects, like the state fixed effects and the time fixed effects to get mm -hmm. rid of this problem, this possible endogeneity of uh, uh, tobacco and cigarette industry. Uh, yeah, which, which uh, regression uh, using data on changes between two time periods eliminates uh, the, the, uh, the state specific and time invariant effects, which uh, in a sense, if we do that, we could attribute uh, uh, some causal power to our beta estimates. So now it's looking at that. So we look at uh, the log, so this should be 19, yeah, 1995 from uh, to 1985, yeah, the variation. Mm -hmm. how, how did uh, the prices change from 1995 to 1985? And we look at the, sorry, how prices change from 1995, 1985 and how income changes to sort of to deal with the problem of uh, the state, state and time specific, uh, state specific and time invariant issues that uh, that that could bias our, our estimates. So to do that, we have to create these variables in R. And then we estimate this, uh, we perform three IV estimations using the IV rec, the TSL, TSLS using only the uh, difference in uh, the sales, tax between 1985 and 1999. And the, the, the second model, we use only the cigarette specific tax instrument. And then the, in the third model, we use both instruments and, and see. So we get this uh, table once, these are all the results. Once we do that, we get this, uh, this table. Mm -hmm. So this is the case with uh, this, uh, the sales tax instrument only the uh, cigarette specific tax instrument only and using both. So the, the book argues that uh, uh, the, 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 the results with the, the state specific only, it's more plausible for, for, for causality. So we could also use the, we could uh, to assess, uh, we could uh, uh, assess the value of our instruments by using the F, F, F test to assess the value of our instruments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you wanna say something? No, 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 no. Yeah, I just keep looking at it, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think uh, uh, we could also conduct the over-identification test since we have um, 
m is greater than k we have two uh, instruments and one endogenous regressor so we could uh, conduct the uh, uh, over identification test to look at the validity of our instruments when we did that test we realized that uh, it's a uh, it is a uh, yeah, we get some mm. biased results using the linear hypothesis because it uh, because of the degrees of freedom was set to two, which should have been one because it should have been mm. m minus k, which is should have been one. Mm. So we could correct this in R using the because the, this is chi square distributed. So using the the, the chi square function, we could adjust that. And the the, the f stud, uh, the 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 p values we get it's a uh, less than 0 0.5, which is uh, significant. So in a sense, it means that uh, none of our instruments are, um, are valid using the over-identification test. Yeah, none of them are so exogenous. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, none of them are exogenous at the, at the 5%. But it's uh, the sales tax is an invalid instrument for the per pack price and the cigarette sales is it was also an invalid instrument and using both of them also it's invalid so so basically i i think one of the main takeaways here is like using an iv it's uh, it's it's very difficult because it's difficult to get uh, a valid instrument i think that's the main main takeaway the, even though the book argues that the assumption of uh, instrument exogeneity is more likely to 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 hold for the general sales tax such that the IV estimates for the long run elasticity of demand for cigarettes is like uh, minus 0 0.9, which is the, the, the interpretation of this estimate is that over a 10 year period, because we are looking at difference from 19, uh, 1985 and 1995, an increase uh, in the average price per package of 1%. Uh, per package by 1% is expected to decrease the consumption uh, of cigarette by 0 0.9 percentage points. So this suggests that in the long run, price increases can reduce uh, cigarette consumption. Yeah, any any comments on, on this? Mm, no, just as we say, as we see, it's a, like a testing the value of the instrument, the variable is a quite complicated, but yeah. it should be yeah. done before we done the model, so. Yeah, but yeah, I'm I'm still kind of following the how was the mechanism, but yeah, it is quite good. Yeah, just go ahead. Yeah, I yeah, think we are almost the time. Yeah, yeah, we are done. That's it. Now he's just saying mm -hmm. where do good instruments, where mm -hmm. do well instruments come from? But he didn't mention anything mm -hmm. like that. He referenced mm -hmm. the book, so uh, mm -hmm. that's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's the end of the chapter. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, maybe you could type stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hold on. Yeah. Hmm.